With an untypical lack of irony, the British magazine The Economist used to refer to the City of London as the place where the best and the brightest work. Ordinary people sometimes resent successful, rich, bright and beautiful uh, people in their city, in particular if they make their presence felt in the form of rising costs of living. How seriously do you want to take the displeasure of ordinary people in your meditation on the ideal city? Nietzsche opined that the Christian cult of victimhood empowers petty people in their struggle against everything that is more beautiful, more intelligent, more skilled or more charming than they are. As I mentioned in the fifth clip, he believed that the reign of petty people has come and that this will bring us nihilism in the end. Thus, Nietzscheans will straightforwardly ignore the interests of, resent of resenting ordinary people. A more moderate approach would be to advise those who resent the presence of the best and the brightest, as it were, to move to another city or neighborhood. This, however, is a piece of advice that ordinary people frequently find pretty offensive, in particular when they have lived in a neighborhood for a very long time. They often feel that they belong there and that the neighborhood is theirs. This rises the question, gives rise to the question, as to who owns a city. To some, the answer seems to be quite obvious. The homeowners own the city. To others, this answer cannot be the whole story. They believe that cities and neighborhoods have a historical acquired identity that should be protected against the unfettered economic interests of homeowners and investors. What is your view? Is a good city one in which history and identity enjoy political protection?